Hello, and welcome to the University of Alberta's Opening Up Copyright Instructional Module on Theoretical Foundations for Copyright. In a Western context, there are three major approaches to the theories that justify copyright. The utilitarian or consequentialist approach, the natural rights approach, and the personality-based approach. Each approach to the argument for copyright is connected to the writings of one or two major philosophers. The utilitarian approach draws from the work of Bentham, the natural rights approach is developed from the writings of Locke, and the personality-based approach comes from the works of Kant and Hegel. The utilitarian or consequentialist view of intellectual property, or IP, treats the temporary monopoly provided through IP rights as a mechanism for encouraging creative and inventive behavior with the aim of advancing the arts and sciences and improving society as a whole. Specifically, Bentham, the father of utilitarianism, viewed patents favorably, arguing, of all the methods of exciting and rewarding industry, this patenting is the least burdensome and the most exactly proportioned to the merit of invention. While he did not address copyright specifically, Bentham's utilitarian argument for patents has been extended and applied as a justification for copyright. This utilitarian justification is clearly present in the United States Constitution's Article 1, Section 8, Clause 8, where the explicit aim of copyright and patents are to promote the progress of science and useful arts. This has heavily influenced United States Supreme Court decisions in cases involving copyright. The policy goal in the utilitarian approach to copyright should be to find the optimal incentive level, which is the minimum level of incentive required to induce the greatest amount of creative and inventive behavior. Complicating this balancing act is the fact that the greater the incentive provided to authors and creators, often through strict controls or limitations on use of works, there is a corresponding decrease in the general access to the works and the public and intellectual good arising from the broader use of those works. The natural rights-based approach to copyright is drawn from the work of John Locke, specifically from his writings on the subject of common property in two treatises of government, which have been extended to intellectual property. The Lockean justification is premised on the idea that when an individual mixes their own labor with something from nature, the result becomes the property of that individual. At the beginning of the process, there is some common property. An individual then makes an investment of his labor and through that investment raises the value of that which was once common. This raising of value through the investment of individual labor is the justification for that individual's deserving to take ownership in the product of that labor. Locke indicates that there are two important conditions that must be met to justify taking of common property. One should not take so much as to create spoilage, and one must leave enough and as good for others. Together, these are known as the Lockean provisos. The natural rights-based perspective does have limitations. In two treatises, Locke was not addressing intangible forms of common property, and Locke specifically wrote on the subject of copyright, where he condemned providing copyright to ancient works and suggested that the term for copyright should be at most 70 years after the death of the author. Lockean justifications of copyright and other IP have always held a degree of appeal in the Anglo-American debates, but have tended to take a secondary role to utilitarian justifications. However, the Lockean notion of a just reward for the creator is often used to supplement utilitarian arguments based on providing incentives. The Canadian system reflects a blending of these approaches. For example, in the Tiberge decision, where the Supreme Court of Canada noted, the Copyright Act is usually presented as a balance between promoting the public interest in the encouragement and dissemination of works of the arts and intellect, and obtaining a just reward for the creator, or more accurately, to prevent someone other than the creator from appropriating whatever benefits may be generated. The personality-based approach of Kant and Hegel justify copyright and other IP based on the view that artistic creations are a manifestation of an individual's personhood and, as such, deserving of protection. Kant specifically condemned the illegal copying of books. However, Kant's focus on the importance of speech led him to conclude that copyright should not be extended to translations and derivative works. Hegel's writings on intellectual property deal with both artistic works and invention. In Philosophy of Right, Hegel claims that property is essential, noting that it is required to provide individuals the freedom to interact with each other through mutually consenting contracts. 
Hegel specifically argues that inventors and authors should retain the control over their intellectual property, noting the author of the work or inventor of the apparatus remains the owner of the general method of multiplying such products. While Kant's and Hegel's arguments may be better suited to works of individual creation by independent persons, this approach to justifying copyright presents some problems for works produced by a collective or under the scope of employment. Is the latest Hollywood movie a manifestation of the will of its director, the leading actor, or the studio CEO, or the primary shareholder? Kant's and Hegel's personality-based approaches to IP create what is arguably the strongest justification for copyright in general, and for moral rights in particular. This approach has a much stronger resonance in continental Europe than in Anglo-American jurisdictions. Their influence is reflected in the 1957 French copyright law, which designated moral rights as perpetual, inalienable, and imprescriptible. In the Anglo-American context, their influence has been muted. Though both Britain and Canada provide moral rights for authors, moral rights have almost no statutory grounds in United States copyright law. Finally, it is important to recognize that all major justificatory theories of copyright are from European authors and reflect that copyright itself is a Western concept. You should now be able to summarize the three main theories that serve as the foundations for copyright and describe how these theories have influenced modern copyright concepts. This has been the University of Alberta's opening up copyright module on theoretical foundations for copyright. Thank you for your attention.